Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have cosine z minus i sine z equals 1 over e and we're going to be solving for z. All right, so z is a complex number and we can go ahead and replace z with a plus bi, can't we? Which is the name of this channel. But is that going to help? That's going to be a good question. So let's see how we can solve this problem in at least one way. And then if there's any other methods that I can come up with during the video, or if you let me know, I'll be more than happy to take a look at it. So here's what I'm going to do for this equation. The polar form. So if you are not familiar with complex numbers, go ahead and check out the lecture videos that I made. I uh, kind of go through all the basics of complex numbers. So, but if you have a complex number that can be written as a plus bi, then we can kind of turn it into, let's call this number z, and then we can kind of turn it into this, from this form, which is called the standard form or the rectangular form, to a polar form, which is, you know, with the trigonometric uh, functions or e to the power something. So this can basically be written as r times e to the power i theta, where r is called the modulus or the absolute value, and theta is called the argument. Well, obviously, there's uh, many values for that, but we can kind of talk about the principal argument first. Okay? So what are we going to do to turn this into that form? We're going to take a look at the modulus first. Modulus is the absolute value, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And then we're going to take that out. So let's take an example. How about 3 plus 4i? If z is 3 plus 4i, then its absolute value, or the modulus, is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 5. And then we can kind of take out a 5 and write this as 3 over 5 plus 4 over 5i. Or I could probably write it as i times 4 over 5 which is more appropriate. And now, from here we should be looking for an angle whose cosine equals this, at the same time whose cosine, and I mean sine equals this. Obviously we do know that we're in the first quadrant because this represents three comma four as a point. You can also think of it as a vector. And then uh, the angle is gonna be acute, right? You could also look at the tangent. So tangent theta is gonna be b over a, which is 4 thirds, and then from here theta can be written as tan inverse or arctangent 4 thirds. You've got to be careful with the arctangent though because we need to know the quadrant. There are two values between 0 and 2 pi. Okay? So, what do we do? Uh, we found the r and we found the theta, so now we can write this as 5 times cosine theta plus i sine theta and the theta is just the angle who, which satisfies this equation. And then from here, we can write it more in a more compact way, e to the power i theta. So that's our goal here, to take this number and write it as r times e to the i theta. And e is important here because we have 1 over e on the right-hand side. Great. So based on Euler's formula, cosine theta plus i sine theta can be written as e to the power i theta. Nice. But what happens if there's a minus sign? Because my expression has a minus sign, cosine z minus i sine z. How, how am I going to write it? They, they don't agree, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a trigonometric trick. And that is the fact that cosine being an even function and sine being an odd function. In other words, replace z with negative z. But before that, let's go ahead and write this down. What is cosine z plus i sine z? It is e to the power i z, right? So now, if you replace z with negative z, you're going to get cosine of negative z plus i sine of negative z. And that should equal replacing z with negative z. We're going to get i times negative z, which is negative i z. Awesome. We got it. But what is cosine of negative z? Since cosine is even and sine is odd, we can write this as cosine of z, so it's unchanged. And think about the first and the fourth quadrant. If you have an angle and it's opposite, that's a reflection. They have the same cosine value. 
But if you have the same thing for sine, since sine is going to be on the y-axis, on the unit circle, they're going to be opposites. Make sense? So in other words, sine of negative z is negative sine of z. So this is going to be minus i sine z, which is what we were looking for. Awesome. So we got what we needed. Cosine z minus i sine z is equal to that. So in our equation, what was the original problem? Cosine z minus i sine z equals 1 over e. Now we can go ahead and replace this with that. And that's going to give us e to the power negative iz equals 1 over e. So that simplifies our equation a great deal. Let's go ahead and work with the powers of e here. One thing that you should be careful about is there's going to be usually infinitely many solutions to a problem or sometimes no solutions. So we have to complexify 1 over e because it's so real that it's not good enough. So we're going to multiply 1 over e by 1. And 1 in the complex world can be written as e to the power 2 pi and i, where n is an integer, right? Obviously, as you change the n values, you're going to get different representations of 1. But guess what? They're all equal to 1. Great. So now let's go ahead and combine the powers. Uh, since that's division, I can go ahead and write this as e to the power negative 1 or 1 over e to the power 1 and subtract the exponents. Whatever you do, you're going to get something like this. Awesome. From here, we should be able to solve for z because that's the only variable. So let's go ahead and solve for z and then we'll check our work. Negative i z equals 2 pi n i minus 1. Remember, n is an integer. And now we're going to divide both sides by negative i. But guess what? You could also multiply by negative i. It's the same thing, pretty much. Multiply by negative i, multiply by negative i. When you multiply, actually, I should say not multiply by negative i, but multiply by positive i. So we're going to multiply by i, not negative i. Let's do it. Multiply by i and multiply by i. Now, that's going to do the trick because i times negative i is negative i squared. And negative i squared is 1 because i squared is negative 1. Something that you should never forget, right, about complex numbers. So we get z from here. And on the right-hand side, i times i is i squared. That's going to give us negative 2 pi n. And then i times 1 is just i. Awesome. This looks like the general solution because n is an integer. But let's go ahead and plug it in. You can just directly plug it in or you can test some specific values such as n equals 0. If n is 0, z equals negative i. How nice. And our equation said e to the power negative i z, right? So replace z with negative i, you're going to get e to the negative i times negative i, which is e to the i squared, which is e to the power negative 1, which is 1 over e. Yay! This particular solution worked, and if you test the other ones, they should also work. And you can definitely check out the general solution as well. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.